Chef Brad Kilgore. Hi, guys. And Welcome. Uh, he's our final chef of the year. We are so honored to have him. He owns how many restaurants in Miami do you have? Right now, we have two restaurants. Uh, we just opened up our brand new hotel restaurant in Wynwood. So the first hotel ever in Wynwood with restaurant Marigolds. Okay, great. Yeah. And what type of cuisine is that? We do a Florida brasserie. So we get inspiration with local ingredients. Uh, we work with farmers and fishermen. And as a brasserie, it's a nice restaurant, but it has something for everybody. Handmade pastas, roasted chicken, nice steaks. And I'm a creative chef, so we put our little fun little twist spin to on it. Okay, yeah. great. Well, I'm going to ask you what a brasserie means, but why don't we start and make sure our families have their water boiling? So go ahead and go ahead and get them started. Absolutely. So the first thing you want to do is get the nice big pasta pot that you have filled with water, preferably hot water, right out of the sink. It makes it boil faster. Fill it up. You want to have a few inches of water. I assume um, we all got like a one pound package of pasta. So just make sure that you know it fits in there. I'm sure a lot of you guys have made dried pasta at home. And just get your water boiling. Don't drop the pasta yet. We're gonna to try to do that all together in a few minutes, so. Okay, so water boiling. Everybody get your water boiling in a nice big pot. So tell me, what does brasserie mean? Brasserie, you know, it's a floating definition that over the years has kind of come into a nice, fun, lively restaurant that has a little bit for everybody. So if you're a fish guy or you're a steak lady, you know, anyone can go there and find something they want to eat. It's okay. not super upscale. There's no white tablecloth. They're right. not wearing a suit and tie. Right. You know, but it's not casual uh, to the point where, you know, you're just getting french fries and burgers, which we do have a really good french fry and burger. Okay. Yeah. So you have something for everybody. That's great. Okay. And tonight, what is the name of the dish we're making? Tonight we're making linguine diavolo shrimp diavolo with pomodoro okay so now clarify what does diavolo mean diavolo is italian for devil because it's spicy okay so everyone you can kind of control your spiciness levels how you like it today okay so how many of you out there raise your hands how many and i know ruth is going to raise her hand way high how many like things spicy i want to see how many spice fans do we have out there i see yep i knew ruth's house oh I see Nessie, yep, I see Tierra, yes. So what Chef just said is that this is meant to be a spicy dish, but he's going to give you hints on how to back right. that off if you don't like it Absolutely. There's going to be a point where we put some of the red chili flakes into the saute pan. If some people in your family don't like it very spicy, just put a little amount, and then at the end, you can sprinkle extra on top of your pasta, which is what we do at my house. Okay. All right, so let's get cooking. You all have your meal kits. I'm trusting you're getting all those ingredients out right now. Your water is boiling, and we're gonna follow Chef along step by step through this recipe. Perfect, I'm excited. Yes. And hungry. Yes, yeah. me too. <laughs> well guys, hopefully you've gotten your pot on, you have water on, and you have it on high heat right now, trying to get it to a boil. Does anybody actually have boiling water already boiling right now? Raise your hand. Uh, we have one thumbs up. Okay, okay, we got yes. a few. Okay. Okay, good. So make sure that you salt your boiling water. And the reason we can't have a recipe for this, because everybody's going to have a different size pot with a little bit different size water. But we can use our taste buds to find out whether it's ready or not. So what you want to do is salt your water, regular old salt, probably about half a cup, more or less. It'll dissolve in the water. Just give it a little bit of stir. You can probably see it in there. Right. We've got an overhead shot right now, so we're looking at your, your just, boiling water. Yes, just dissolving it. And I want you to try it, but blow on it. Make sure it cools down. You don't want to get your mouth burned or your tongue burned. We've got to save those taste buds for the pasta. But you want it to taste like a soup. And probably a lot of moms or grandmas out there are going to say, this doesn't taste as good as my soup. But... <laughs> You don't want it to taste like the ocean if you've ever been swimming in the ocean. So we're, we're tasting for a little bit of salt in your water to taste like a soup. Why are we salting the water? I mean, I have to admit, yeah. if I'm crazy busy and my children are running all over, sometimes I just throw water on, throw the pasta in. Why do I need That's this okay stuff? That's okay, too. Is so it's so the seasoning gets inside the noodle. That uh -huh. way, when you're eating it and you're chewing on all the pasta, that everything is well seasoned all the way through. 
It is not fully required. If you're not trying to eat a lot of salt right now, just skip the salt in the boiling water. It won't be that big of a deal. Okay. All right, so we got our water. What's next? Okay. All right. We got it looking good on boiling water over there. Everybody's salted. Yep. We got some head nods. Yep. I'm going to put my saute pan on about medium heat. You don't want it too hot. Right now the saute pan's cold. Let's turn it, turn it to low. And we're gonna, we want it warm when we start the cooking process, but you don't want it to burn anything, okay? So if you have an electric stove, put it on like a one or a two. Okay. Next up, garlic. Everybody have their whole garlic? Yes, you should have your garlic in your meal kit. Go ahead and pull that out. You want to peel off some of the extra skin layers on it. Oop. How many cloves are we looking for, our chef? We want six cloves. Oh, of, wow. of the okay. big ones. Six of the larger cloves on the outside of the garlic. All right? And just work your way around it. Break it with your hands. It should come off pretty naturally. Okay. The bottom stem, we don't want that, okay? That has no flavor. Okay. I see Alea's working on it. I see we've got Yumian working on it. It's so, just, yeah. uh, on your garlic on the top, you have the little tail, and on the bottom, you have the root. Cut off that root, and you can actually, if you cut it about 90%, you use that root to peel and help pull the skin off a little bit. So, that's right. a little trick that I use in the restaurants. Okay, great. Chef, we have an overhead shot of you Perfect. so they can see up close how you're peeling great. your garlic. So, I'm going to take a fresh one here. We have the root right there. Mm -hmm. When we cut it, you're going to try to cut it not all the way through. And it creates a little handle, and it holds on to some of that skin, which gives you a Clever. little access, because sometimes garlic can be finicky. But I do have to say, it's cheaper than the peeled stuff by a lot, and the flavor is so much better. It just takes you a few extra seconds, and it takes, makes your food so much better. And, and that's a tip we've heard before. So while you continue to peel your garlic, um, we've heard that tip before from the chefs, that it's really important to use fresh garlic. I know you can go into the grocery store, and I know you can sometimes find garlic that's um, even minced in, yeah. in the oil that's on the shelf. And, and what we're hearing is that it loses flavor. It doesn't have the same flavor as fresh garlic. And when you're comparing prices, and that's what we're trying to teach too, is how to shop on a budget, um, garlic is one of the most inexpensive things you can find in a grocery store. And, and the most flavorful. Yes, right. yes, so yeah. why wouldn't you get that? Absolutely. So when you have six pieces of garlic ready to go, hopefully you have some good sized ones. I like garlic a lot. You're going to slice it. We're not gonna chop it you know, ch -ch -ch -ch, like you see on a lot of Food Network televisions things. We're just going to slice it thin. Okay, so we're not crushing it like we've done in the past. Um, and again, just to repeat what Chef is saying, we're only slicing it. And we're slicing it because you're getting more of a, um, a garlic flavor in your dish. Yeah. Like slicing it versus chopping it into small pieces. And or? it becomes part of the dish. We want, don't want it to, like, disappear. We want it to actually, when you're eating it, it's like kind of glued to the shrimp and the noodles and right, everything. Right, right. You really taste it. Yeah, so try to slice it as thin as you're comfortable with. Don't worry if they're a little bit thick. Garlic's always good. And we have an overhead right now of you using your knife. And I love the fact that your knife isn't leaving your board. <laughs> this Correct. is another knife skill technique that we try to teach. Um, so as you go ahead sure. and you slice another one, if you're ready to. I'll show you how I grab onto it also. Okay. You have the neck here. You're going to put your thumb there. Uh -huh. And you're going to put the flat part of your index opposite of that. So flat index thumb. Okay. All right. So, so you're I not really holding it by the handle per se. Well, that's, yeah, that is your main control. Okay. And then I naturally put the handle right here in between where the fingers sit. Okay. And then make my grip. Okay, great. And then I like watching you. I like, we've got an overhead shot here. I like watching how you just rotate your knife. Yeah, you know, the, the shape of the knife is there for a reason, and you can roll it. That's what we call it, rolling of the knife. That's why it has that neck on it. Okay, great. A little tip for you all, aspiring chefs out there, how to slice your garlic. And all you right. said we're doing six cloves. Yes. Okay. And they're going to infuse into the butter. Okay. And this is my last clove. Okay, I'm watching 
We've got uh, Yimian's couple on right now. They're slicing their garlic. Okay. Um, it looks like, Nessie, are you ready? You already got your garlic going? You're ready to go? She says, yes, I'm ready to go. <laughs> Guys, and since we all have different stovetops, and I have a strong gas stovetop here, I took my saute pan off, but just make sure you already have it a little bit warm. If you think it's hot, pull it off for now because we have one more thing to do before we start cooking the sauce. Okay, great. Okay, next up is, now if you have the main chef cooking tonight and you have the assistant chef, maybe ask the assistant chef to help you with crushing the tomatoes. I have a little bit of a cheat, I have rubber gloves here. So if you have gloves, that's great. But we don't expect that, you know, I don't have gloves at home. Um, so I'm gonna crush this. And if I suggest either yourself or your sous chef tonight, help you crush the tomatoes as well. So. You have your can of whole tomatoes with the juice and everything. And then what you wanna do is take a strainer. And if you don't have a strainer, it's okay. You can just take a spoon and you wanna pour off the juice. Okay, so you're just looking for the tomatoes, not the juice at this point? You just want the, tomato, okay. uh, the actual tomatoes. But if you make soups, or if you boil chicken, or if you boil pork, and you make shredded pork or chicken or carnitas, save that juice. Add some garlic and spices to it, and you're gonna be good to go. Okay, great, great it tip. It also help your costs. Yes, and that's what we're always looking for. We're looking for little to no food waste. And so here's another tip. Even though what we're asking you to do right now is open your can of whole tomatoes, drain out the liquid so all you have left are those whole tomatoes, Chef is saying, save that juice. You can use it in other recipes and, you know, it, it freeze it. Put it, in a, yeah. put it in a container and throw it in your freezer and sure. use it for, like you said, other recipes. That's great, great advice. Yeah. So now you're just going to get your hands dirty and start breaking up the tomatoes. Okay. Now, some people like chunks, some people don't. We're going to make ours kind of smooth. It makes a really good sauce that way. I also love sauce, so, but if you like chunky tomatoes, go for it. You know, it's based on what your guys' preference. Great. I can see them getting their hands dirty and yeah. uh, the tomatoes. This is how they really do it in Italy. I worked in Italy. Did you? And everyone thinks in Italy they use only fresh tomatoes. No, they use canned tomatoes because they're delicious. And when you have a canned tomato, you pick it out of the garden, out of the fields when it's perfectly ripe. That only happens once a year. It only happens a couple weeks a year. So in Italy, they use their own canned See, tomatoes. And, and that's another tip. I mean, we think sometimes that we have to get the fresh tomatoes. They cost so much more. There's yeah. a lot more that goes into a using a work. whole tomato where you have yeah. to peel it and, and whatnot. But canned tomatoes work out beautifully 100%. For okay, great. Okay, so we're going to drop our pasta now. Everyone's got boiling water. Okay. We've got salt in our water. Okay. Now, our pasta is going to take probably 7 to 10 minutes, which gives us time to cook the sauce. So one thing I really like about this is besides the shrimp, which you can have frozen, basically everything else you're either going to have around the house or it's going to last. And so this is an easy, you know, about 30-minute recipe that you can have that's like restaurant quality, and you can just have it for your family in about half an hour, especially when you get used to the recipe itself. Okay, great. All right. So are we using the entire container of pasta? I mean, I want to eat, so we're going to do we're the whole We're using the entire pasta. container. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure there's some families out there the same. Um, I do suggest having some sort of strainer or colander for your sink. If you don't have a pasta strainer, that's fine. You're just going to have to get a slotted spoon or some other utensil to help you keep the noodles in the pot when you're pouring the water off. But don't be too stressed about it. I'm sure you can figure it out. Just be safe when we dump it out. All right, everybody ready? Let's go. Let's, Let's go dump with our the pasta. noodles. All right, and we're using linguine. Yes. We could use spaghetti. We could right. use and and what what differs? I mean, spaghetti takes less time and linguine. Spaghetti, the noodles are round and it just eats differently. I personally like flat noodles. It kind of grabs onto the sauce a little bit better. Okay. So I chose linguine. Um, you can use fettuccine, which is wider, and technically you could use a penne pasta. 
you know, I don't think there's many dry pastas you find at the store that you would shy away from this, but I do prefer a longer noodle than a shorter one, but penne would be great too. Okay, great. So we've got our linguine going, and you said so, about seven to 10 minutes? Yes, seven to 10 minutes. It's gonna vary a little bit based on how much people's water are boiling, but we're gonna talk about that in a few. But you just wanna come over and stir it every few minutes so it doesn't stick together. And uh, if you've ever read to put olive oil in your water, save your olive oil. Don't do it. No, it just floats on top. Yeah, oil and water don't mix. They don't mix. Yeah, so okay. what's that? So we know. have our warm saute pan. Let's turn this up to medium, about a three, four, or five on your stove, okay? We don't want to get the butter brown. We also don't want to brown the garlic, and we don't want to brown the shrimp. So those are the next three steps that we're going to do. You just want this butter melting and bubbling. Okay, next. so you're using an entire stick, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're using an entire stick of butter. A whole stick of butter. Okay. Actually, you can help me. I have my sure. shrimp in the refrigerator yes. down there if Let you want to grab for those for me. All right, guys. Let's uh, have everything you need right by you, okay? We're melting the shrimp. We're melting the butter. We are melting the butter. We're not melting the shrimp. I looked at the shrimp. We're melting the butter. <laughs> Okay. We know. Now, remember, you don't, you don't want to fry this. So if you start seeing it getting too hot or the colors start changing, then turn your pan down on, on low, okay? Okay. The next up is the garlic. Okay, that Once garlic we sliced. We're going to go ahead and add it to the melted butter. Yep. When your butter is almost all the way melted, you can add the garlic. You don't need to wait for it all to melt. Um, and I want to emphasize that we are cooking gently. We're not frying, we're not sauteing at a super high temperature. This helps keep the clean flavors and it keeps your juice shrimpy at the end, your shrimp juicy, juicy at the end. Right. Got the Freudian slips today. Right. Okay, we got our skillets going. I see Gladys has hers. I see Nessie's working her kitchen. Tiara, how you doing? How's everybody doing? If you have any questions along the way, don't you know, raise your hand. We can unmute you or use that chat box. So again, you want this on medium to low heat, somewhere between a three and a five on your stove. So it's just simmering. You're simmering that garlic, it's infusing it, it's cooking, it's taking out the raw, what I call it. Okay. Because raw garlic, you know, is very strong, but we want a, a good amount of garlic flavor. Right. While that's infusing into the butter, go ahead and pick out some parsley. And you all have fresh parsley in your in your meal kits. Um, Chef, tell us about fresh versus parsley that we get yeah. in the spice aisle. Tell Out us why we're using it. all the spices, parsley absolutely is the only one to buy fresh for sure. Um, dried parsley will, you're just throwing three or four dollars in the trash. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't have any flavor. It doesn't have flavor. No. Right. Now, other ones, dried thyme, dried oregano, those are great dried, but they actually even taste very different when they're dried. Um, they're more pungent. So the parsley, it brings this like green vegetal flavor that actually we have these rich and acidic and sweet flavors coming in. It kind of helps balance it all together. Sure, and it looks pretty. I always think it about a, a dish pretty. with fresh parsley, it looks so pretty. On that note, make sure to save some of it to go on top of your pasta. Oh, so don't use all your parsley right now. In fact, I think you'll probably, how much are we using right now? What I was gonna say? suggest, based on the size of your parsley, you don't, about half, maybe even a little bit less. Okay, Immaculee, I see you with your parsley. So we're talking about half that bunch. Yep, very good. And now you're pulling the parsley leaves from the stems. Yep, so taking, we call them florets. That's the top where it's nice and flowery. And you don't want any of the stem the stem just, you know, it's not bad for you. It just doesn't taste as good. Yeah. And the texture is a little bit weird. So all herbs, you can take the stems off of them. Great. Okay. And then do you have a tip for us on how to preserve what we're not using? Like how, how yeah. can you preserve that so you can use it maybe in a dish tomorrow night? It's so important with greens and herbs. Anything that's delicate like that is that they can't be exposed to the air in the in the refrigerator. So, so what would you do? You, you need to wrap it in plastic wrap or put it in a Tupperware. Okay. And, and that way the fan and the refrigerator and the cold isn't making it mushy. Okay. Good. Okay, so my pasta looks like it's pretty close, which soon we're going to drain it off. But I want to get this parsley chopped. So what I'm doing is I'm going to squeeze it all into a ball. 
as tight of a ball as you can, put it all in there, and then just like the garlic, slice it as thin as you're comfortable with. Okay, great. Aliyah is working. Um, Mackley is working with it. I can see. Yes. Ruth. We actually call this chiffonade. Chiffonade. So yeah. an overhead shot we just showed you. Let's go back to it real quick, Monson. Um, his parsley is, is, it was rolled into a ball, which makes it easy to slice through. Yes. And so we got this nice chiffonade. Great. And you're checking pasta, so you want to recommend maybe everybody look at Absolutely. their pasta? Absolutely. Okay. Um, guys, take a look at your pasta. If it's rolling boil super, super hard, you can turn it down. You don't have to do the craziest boil on pasta. It should start, you know, going limp, as you can see. I think mine has about 30 seconds left on it. Okay. I'm actually going to grab a fork to help me get it out of the water rather than a spoon. And is this the al dente test that we hear about so yeah, much? Yeah, <laughs> you know, they say throw it against the wall and see if it sticks. I don't suggest that. But you, you know, you want it to eat well. And if it tastes like dried pasta on the inside, then it's not done yet. You know, it shouldn't, shouldn't it taste weird. All right, here's the test. Still needs about one more minute. You can taste that kind of dried pasta flavor. Right. You want to get through. You don't want to overcook it. It's kind yep. of a science, isn't it? Yeah, and that's why boiling at too high rapid heat is going to mushy on the outside, and right. then it's going to be raw on the inside. Right. Okay, I'm going to get out of your way. No worries. Okay, so our pasta, one or two minutes. We're getting close. I've got my garlic here. Next up, garlic butter. It's still warm. We're going to follow with all the shrimp, okay? Okay, so everyone, we need you to grab your shrimp. Yes, I see, Tiara's got hers. Your shrimp has already been bought where it's been unshelled and deveined with no tails on. So um, we did find this at, within our budget at the local grocery store this way. These are medium-sized shrimp. I believe Alessandra said that you guys got a bonus. You got large shrimp. So nice. you may need a little bit more cooking time with this shrimp than what chef's going to use. And give a nice teaspoon sprinkle of salt over the garlic and the shrimp. And speaking of budget, I bought all my stuff for today's at Publix as well. And these 16 shrimp, because I counted them out, they're a little bit smaller, but it cost me $1.74. Really? Yes. Wow. Yeah, so, you That's know, they're great. good shrimp. And tell you what, they weren't the cheapest shrimp. No? No, no. You could get even cheaper. Than yeah, that. exactly, which I thought was pretty exciting. And it's always good. I mean, if you don't use, for instance, I notice when I go to Publix, you get those big bags. And right. I think they're like fourteen ninety nine or something for like a big bag. But you can get two or three meals out of it. Exactly. So that's my point. Don't be shy about the fact that you see a higher price tag on a big bag. Especially they're, if they're frozen. They're not going bad, right? If they're frozen, right? they're not yeah. going bad. So then divide it up. We're not, we're using how many? 16 shrimp? And you've got plenty more yeah, to throw back Yeah, four or five your... per family member, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, so you can start to see the shrimp turn color. Remember, we are on low to medium heat. Shrimp's turning color. Now I'm going to go ahead and strain my pasta. Okay, okay, let's do it. Double check your pasta, guys. Mine is ready. I'm going to strain it off here. Okay, I see. Yep, I see you guys looking at your pasta. Time to strain it. Make sure you check it like Chef did to make sure it's cooked all the way. All right. So believe it or not, the shrimp cooked very quickly. Yeah, shrimp doesn't take long at nope, all. No, nope. And they're going to continue cooking here. We don't want them to get dry. So we're going to keep moving. Then next up are our spices. You have a tablespoon of garlic powder and a tablespoon of onion powder already mixed for you. And then you have your crushed chili flakes. So this is the moment I was talking about that you can control how spicy you want it. We like it spicy. We can always add more, but you can't take it out. And the reason you put the spices in now is because spices, the flavor comes from the oil. So if you put the spices in the water, you're not going to taste it that much. But if you put it in the oil, it blooms and all that right. flavor comes out. Right. Good tip. Okay. So you all have a container of pre-measured onion and garlic. Uh, powdered onion and garlic, just like you saw Chef add. Go ahead and add that to your pan. Add the crushed red pepper to taste. Um, Diablo, as we said. El Diablo. El Diablo. All right. So once you bloom the spices, it's instant. You give it a stir. You smell that aroma. Then you're going to go with your crushed tomatoes. Okay. 
Wow. It smells amazing in here. I think, uh, I think everybody's going to eat well tonight. I think so, too. All right. All your tomatoes, no problem. We'll put this over here. And, Chef, I don't think, I think you're our first chef to cook with shrimp. Oh, yeah? Yes. We I had, we had um, I'm trying to remember, I think it was either Michael Beltran or Alan Susser. One of the two did a fish dish, um, but you're the first to use shrimp. So right. I'm excited that we get to add that to our recipes online. Me, too. All right, so basically, the tomatoes have already been cooked. That's why they're canned like that. We already infused our butter. We made the spices, and we're basically just bringing this up to uh, a boil, you know, just a bubble. Once you start seeing the bubbles on the side, our sauce is pretty much ready, and we're going to do a finishing touch of lemon juice and Parmesan into it wow. after I put the noodles in it. And, and then the last moment, parsley, we're going to go ahead and plate it. I want you guys to, you got Parmesan, I want you to put half in the sauce here in a minute and the other half sprinkle on top, kind of like the parsley. Right. So again, you got a container, an eight ounce container, yes. Immaculee, I can see your container. Can you show it to the camera real quick? I see you. Yes. Okay. That is a large container. Uh, can you see, Chef, what she showed oh, yeah. you? Okay. okay. So we're, how many ounces is so, that? Do, we, do you have an ounce on that? Um, Alessandra, can you check and see? I can't read. Wait, eight ounces. Okay, okay it's so eight ounces. I would say about half, maybe a little less than half in your sauce when we drop the noodles in it, and then as much as you want after that. I know some people like a lot of cheese. Some people like a little bit less. Okay. I see Yimian's camera on the couple. They're tasting al dente. Is your pasta good? Looks like it's good. Okay. Yeah. Oh, no, it's not ready yet. Okay. Give it another minute or two. Well, while it's cooking, you can have your sauce finishing no problem. And that way it goes directly into your finished sauce. And then we do the Parmesan and the parsley. Okay. I see Immaculee's got it going. She's already added her Parmesan. Immaculee's getting ahead of us because we haven't had our Parmesan nope. yet. Okay. But, um, but I'm going to go with my noodles okay. before they get sticky. Okay. So, Chef, while we have just a second, tell us what got you into cooking. I mean, did you always know you wanted to grow up and be a chef? That's a good question. Um, I started working at a really young age. Actually, I was washing dishes in a diner at uh, 10 years old in sixth grade. Oh, wow. And I would work on the weekends, and I fell in love with it. I also, you know, liked earning a paycheck, and, and I could buy the video game I wanted, or, <laughs> you know, you, what all the things you want as a kid. So I worked weekends. So guys, I've got my pasta sauce, and I've got my noodles, and I've got half, half of my Parmesan going in now. Okay. okay. So you started as a dishwasher. Yes. And so what right then got you to where you are today? Well, you know, it's, as they say, it's a lot of hard work, but I, I've always been very passionate about it. Once I kind of understood that this was the career path I was going to take, uh -huh. um, I decided to do a lot of studying and work with some of the best chefs in the country. And I worked my way up. I was a dishwasher, like I said, for years and years. And it just made sense to me um, to continue on this path because I saw opportunity. You know, I didn't come from a, you know, family that was going to pay for college or um, work for my dad's company or anything like that. You know, it was really, I have great parents, but it just wasn't in the cards, you know? So right. I, I saw the opportunity to keep cooking and I connected with the people in the kitchen and they kept giving me opportunities and I studied and I took on the challenges and it really became my life. That's wonderful. I know um, Adrienne, uh, her camera's off, but uh, she's spoken to us before. Um, we have some aspiring chefs out there. Oh. I think the, that these cooking classes have helped everyone understand that, you know, it's fun, it's creative, it's, it's nothing to be shy of. Get in the kitchen, start, start learning, start experimenting. Yep. And with your instructions, we can cook healthy meals. Exactly. Great. Uh, this is smelling good. I got a little green in there. I finished the parsley. I can see that half of that Parmesan that I put in there now is melted inside. I see. We've it, got a close-up on that. If you think your pasta is a little bit too thick, you can add a splash of water. I think mine looks pretty nice. Quite happy with it. And you notice, like, even though it has a good amount of butter, you don't see it, like, greasy or anything, right. which is super important because it'll eat funny. And I don't want to miss a step here because um, I was talking to you, and I, I hope yep. I didn't distract. Uh, you added half of a lemon. 
Yes, yes. I so, mentioned earlier, and my fault, I just got into the flow. Right, right. I just took a quarter of a lemon or half a lemon. The lemons vary in size, and it helps make the cheese taste cheesier. That's how, why I use it in things that I put cheese. So the Parmesan is going to taste like more Parmesan. Um, and sometimes people think it needs more salt, but sometimes it just needs a little bit a little of lemon. lemon. Okay, so you all should have a lemon in your meal kit, correct, Alessandra? I just want to make sure we've got the lemon. Yes, I see. Okay, I see. Immaculate's got it. Okay, so we just did half of that. Save the other half. Um, yeah, save the other half, or um, you know, you can even just do a, one of the wedges off of it. You don't maybe even need a full half of the lemon because sometimes there's more juice in one lemon to the next. Right. Um, and I just put it in at the end. Parsley, lemon, ready to plate. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, I see. I see a whole bunch of really great dishes out there. Everyone's ready to sit and serve up. So let's go ahead and go sure. on to the plating. Part. Sure. So, part you can use tongs if you want. Um, what I want you to practice is kind of dividing those shrimp up so everybody gets what they want. And once you put it in the plate, give it a little bit of a twist. That way, it kind of makes this nice little uh, mountain or pile. It's fun to make a nice presentation because we're going to put a little bit more chili if you like. We're going to put a touch more Parmesan and we're going to place the shrimp around the outside. Wonderful. And I have to say, looking at this big bowl of pasta, we normally try to, to, to feed a family of four. That's what we do with our meal kits. We plan for a family of four. This is definitely going to feed a family of four, and I would even suspect there might be some leftovers. There might be, but this is plenty of pasta to feed your family. That was definitely my goal. So Great. Well, count how many shrimp you need per person. Take them out with either your fork or your tongs, and just put them around the outside nicely. Kind of be a part of our presentation here. And something I've learned from you, Chef, is I think about making pasta a lot. Mm -hmm. But you taught me two ingredients I don't normally put in my pasta, and that is the butter. Yeah. And I can see why it makes a velvety, rich sauce. Exactly. And using lemon, that's my big tip. I, I don't think of you know a, a, a red sauce with lemon in it. And that you taught me that. So You want to do it at the very end. Right. And you can do it even if you're going to do a white sauce, like an Alfredo. Uh -huh. You can do it, but make sure it's at the very end. And it just makes, again, it makes your cheesy. Done. Does anybody have their pasta done? I'm almost done. Oh, hi, Adrian. Good to see you. Cervix. Hold on. Yes, I see you. You're sideways. I see you. Okay, I know we're. I know Immaculate's got to be there. Yep, she's got hers. I see Gladys has hers. She's bowling hers up. Everybody, that was a simple, easy, affordable dish. Thanks to Chef Brad Kilgore. Thank you so much. Any questions? Um, use the chat. Alessandra, do we have any questions? Not at this time. That looks okay. delicious. Oh my gosh. I Guys, try wait. the presentation. Please, thank you so much for logging on and enjoy your dinner. Yes. Okay, everybody. Love you. Thank you, Chef, and thank you, Stacy. Thank you. God bless. Merry Christmas, and we'll see you in the new year. With a Happy holidays, guys. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>